as I was thinking about the talk series, I'm like, wait a minute. So I was already yeah. planning to sign up, but I was like, wait a minute, we need to, you know, educate the people. <laughs> yes, it makes so, yeah. sense. I, when you reached out to me, I was like, oh yeah, this brand makes sense. All the black like, travel people, yes, let's talk. <laughs> So I guess we'll get started. People are starting to jump in, but I want to be sensitive of your time because I know you're busy, busy, booked and busy, which is a good thing. And congratulations on your new home, first of all. Thank you so much. And we'll get into that too. I mean, you are just doing it. And I, I am so proud of you and so happy to have you with us tonight. So just want to welcome everyone to the Black Travel Talk series. We've been doing it all week in honor of National Black Business Month. A um, few more days to go ahead and definitely make sure you support Black-owned businesses who have been ravaged by, you know, what's going on in the world and receiving the, the least amount of help. And um, Stephanie Jones, who I was talking to yesterday, you know, quoted that over 50 percent of Black-owned businesses have had to shut their doors. Um, during the pandemic and you know many of them will not be able to recover so yeah. any way that i can support <laughs> i'm here to do so especially if it makes sense um just to give a little background about me i'll be real quick with that my name is kim smith creator founder of black travel culture last year we started a black travel talk series that was live and in person so it was a um, fee-based event but we had some of the most dynamic speakers um, mm -hmm. either directly related to or indirectly related to the travel industry. So journalists, um, VPs of tourism boards, um, influencers, just, you know, a, a gamut ran wide. And, you know, with 2020 being what 2020 is, everyone's pivoting, right? So <laughs> I had to kind of redesign what this was going to look like. And truth be told, I sat on it for a while, uh, but I do have a business coach who, passed away. I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, the Six Figure Chick. Yes, EC. She's yes, having a memorial Cece. tomorrow, tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, yes, yes. From three o'clock, yes. Tomorrow. So um, in honor of her, I got off my butt and I was like, you know what? I was looking to do a bigger summit later in the year, but I'm like, these conversations need to happen now. And mm -hmm. um, if nothing else, we'll start with um, the IG Lives and then morph into something else, um, depending on mm. how difficult uh, your, your VIP course is. <laughs> <laughs> it might be something else. Yeah, <laughs> I have to wait till Q1. But um, so that's a little bit about me. I come from pub, the communications industry. I worked at Essence for about 17 years, where mm -hmm. um, I sold media. So from the magazine to online to the Essence Festival and events. Uh, prior to that, I worked at um, a Black-owned radio station here in New York, um, WBLS. And I'm also a proud grad of Howard University. Go Kamala Harris. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and so I am committed to this community, to the upliftment of this community, and to the empowerment of this community. And so I'm super excited, Terry, to bring you into this conversation. I'm going to read your bio really quickly, and then I'm really just okay. going to turn it over to you. Um, but Terry, and let me, I want to say it right, Ijoma? Uh huh. Yeah, you did okay. it right. Terry yeah. Ijoma is an entrepreneur, but uh, entrepreneur, a day trader, a real estate broker. Who, and a real estate broker who brings to her audience a wealth of knowledge on how to make money in any financial climate. Boy, do we need that right now. She is no stranger <laughs> to hard work and started day trading over 10 years ago while gaining experience in operations, logistics, staff development, purchasing, and contract negotiations. Um, gradually, Terry transitioned to a full-time trader and real estate broker. Wow, That's, you are living my dream. <laughs> Terry <laughs> uh, enjoys enlightening people on how to invest and continuously seeks opportunity, opportunities that allow her to encourage others to become astute about the strategies of investing and building wealth for themselves. The Dallas native, the Dallas, Texas native is a graduate of Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT for short, with a Bachelor of Business Management. And are you still currently pursuing the master? No, I'm finished. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Finished the Master of Communications <laughs> from Dallas Theological Seminary. I'm listening to it. I'm like, oh, this bio is is a little old, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we'll we'll I'll, I'll send you where I got it from. But um yeah, but anyway, so congratulations on um achieving your master's degree as well. Wow. Um and during your time off, <clears throat> you can probably catch Terry. Well, pre-COVID, you could catch her exploring the world. 
of practicing <laughs> photography and watching movies. So welcome, Terry. I'm so happy to have you. Thank um, you. And so you know what? I think what I'll do is just turn it over to you to tell a little bit more about yourself, and then we'll go into the three, the three ways that you think we should, or the three financial moves we should make right now to set us up for a successful future later. So okay. take it away. Sure. So all of those things are, are absolutely, absolutely correct. And thank you, Angie. She says, this is nice. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's so sweet. Um, but yep. Yeah, so one of the biggest things about me is that I did about 10 years of working in education and nonprofits. And for a long time, like their mission was my mission. So I was working with Teach for America and it was all about education equality. And I was working on their national team to tra train teachers. Then I worked for a ministry and we were talking about after school programs. And we were trying to help kids to learn about the Lord and also increase their grades in, in oh, Chicago. Wow. Yes. Um, and so I was helping with volunteering for that. And, and I often would get lost in the passions of the job, but they didn't pay very much. And I also would be working around the clock. So I kind of lost my own life okay. um, and didn't have a very high salary. Uh. So I got to a point in my very last job where I, where I was an assistant principal of an elementary school. And I just realized like, I am stressed. Like this cannot be my life. Like I'm working all the time. I like the administration is crazy. The kids wow. are going crazy. Like. <laughs> I just was at a place like a breaking point. And I think a lot of people I'm, I'm realizing have come to that point in their life where they're just like, something's got to change. This, yes. this is not going to be the thing. Yes. And then on top of that, I had a friend pass away. So I'm sure like I'm, I'm sending my condolences to you because I know like your mentor passing, like anytime someone passes, your mind starts to, to think about like, man, life is way too short and you've got to live your life. So I decided, okay, I got to get an exit strategy out of this job as an assistant principal. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was trading stocks, which I know that sounds so random, but I had learned about it in high school and then interned on Wall Street in college. So I, I knew a little bit, but I didn't know enough right. to really be dangerous. So now I was like, okay, let me take this side hustle and really try to make it into a full-time thing. So I started trading and then began, began to make $300 a day, which is what I needed to quit my job. Yes. Wow. And it was just 300. It was like, I think some people are like 300. You, that's not a lot of money. No. When you think about that, that was $1,500 a, a week, 6,000 a month, like 72,000 a year. That was good money just off of $300 a day. Right. So when I learned that I could do that consistently from the stock market, I was able to quit and start traveling all over the world. So that's when I went everywhere. <laughs> South Korea, Thailand, Australia, Vietnam, <laughs> I was everywhere. And, and that's when people started asking me to teach them as well. And so now I teach people how to trade and travel. And I just want to make sure they have your right handle. So I know you have I'm an investor at I'm an investor on IG and also mm -hmm. at Trade and Travel IG. Is there, are yes. there any handles that you or any On other IG, things? that's it. On okay. YouTube, you can also go to Trade and Travel. There's a lot of good uh, free content that I've put out on YouTube at Trade and Travel as well. But on IG, it's at I'm an investor and um, Trade and Travel. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Well, you know what? You kind of talked about shifting from the employee to the entrepreneur. And I, I really want you to just give a little bit more insight as to how did you overcome your fears to do that? Like what steps did you take? Because a lot of us are so stuck in, you know, I, I don't think I could do this. I need that guaranteed income. What about my health insurance? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think one thing that this year has taught us is that nothing is guaranteed anyway. Yeah. So how did you like kind of navigate in, in the transformation of Terry, the employee, to Terry, the boss? So, great question. I had always had side hustles. So, I've, like, I've been a, in, an entrepreneur since I was little. Like, I had a, in elementary school, I had a business doing groceries for the older people in the neighborhood. There was a grocery store in our neighborhood. So, I put out flyers. And I was like, if anybody wants me to go get their groceries, I'll go pick them up. So I was like the Instacart <laughs> before Instacart was a thing. I love it. 
I love it. <laughs> and then in high school, I had like this candy business. So I've always been an entrepreneur. But for some reason, when this was, when I was actually going to take this step to be full time in trading, it, it actually was pretty hard for me. Like I was really scared. Yeah. And the, the real question that I suffered with was like, dang, all this work that I put in, somebody else, and it was hard, right? So I'm like, man, I put in all this work. Somebody else is going to come in after me and get all the credit. Exactly. So that, was a, that was a real thing. I was like, I don't want somebody else to come in this job and get all the credit. But at the same time, I'm drowning. I hate it. I don't really want to be here, but I don't want somebody else to get the credit. It was <laughs> like the rationale just wasn't there. Yeah, I know. A lot of us struggle with that. And it is hard. Like anytime you work really hard to build something up, it's hard to walk away from it. Right. And in my case, I feel like I was really taking a step of faith because like I didn't know anybody else who was trading for income. I didn't know anybody who was trading, period. And then let alone trading for income and had quit their job and done it full time. So this was definitely something that was different. My family, my mom was scared. She was like, you need insurance. But my grandmother was the one that was like, baby, I prayed about it, and you can do it. <laughs> Those praying grandmas, I tell you. Yes. <laughs> I think it's that wisdom. Like, they've seen enough of life to realize that when you look back over your life, what are you going to really value the most? Is it going to be that job, or is it going right. to be the, you know, that leap of faith or that time that you at least tried something new? So I think yeah. that was the thing, like, you can do this. Like life is long. And I think me sometimes in our, in our insecurities and in our fear, we don't realize that there's a lot more to life than just this right now today. Exactly. Um, exactly. So, so okay. yeah, so it was actually a hard decision for me. And I, like, I really remember having like in my journal, having two different columns. One was, okay, you can quit right now or quit at the end of the school year all right, do I travel or do I stay at home? Do I get a lease or do I leave my lease? Like all these questions. And finally, it was just like, look, if you're going to take a leap of faith, this is the time to do it. So just work really hard. See if you can prove yourself in trading. If you reach that, that goal, then quit. Right. Wonderful. And I just want people to understand as well. So even though the name of um, your course, which we'll get into in a second, is Trade and Travel, the one thing I think people need to realize that you can insert whatever your passion is yes. for the word trade. I mean, for the word travel. So trade and um, whatever. Uh, going a, well, I would say a cruise ship, but, <laughs> you know, live your passion of becoming an artist or, or some type yeah. of creator or something like that. So um, I don't want anyone to get stuck up on the travel, even though this is Black travel culture and this is Black travel talks. Mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to get up get caught up on the word travel to see how financial freedom can help you live your dreams. So yeah, um, yeah, no, absolutely. And um, I will say that I did not know that you interns on Wall Street. So that is absolutely another big bonus that, you know, mm -hmm. um, you got to see the inner workings of, of you know, it. Yes, exactly look like. And so um, mm -hmm. I guess I would like to find out, um, before we get into the three steps, um, are there any, I guess somebody said they're ready for the gyms, right? So are there mm -hmm. any, um, Hi, is, there guys. Any, Thanks for being here. is there <laughs> anything that you can um, say that you, or caution us about when we're looking to, like, what are the lessons that you learned? What did you, if you would have mm -hmm. foreseen something before you made the leap to um, become a full-time trader and, and real estate broker, what would you do differently? Yeah, I would say there's a couple things. The first one is you have to learn how to pick the right companies. Okay. What I often see is that we get really loyal to companies that we, you know, we deal with or interact with, but they may not be the best companies to trade. Mm -hmm. For example, I had a Ford car for the longest. I loved my Ford. It was you know, it got me from point A to point B. I had a Ford Focus and my cousins used to, you know, joke on me because, oh, you got a Ford Focus. But it got me from point A to point B. 
Um, if I was just trading, though, based on what I like, Ford for a long time was not a good stock. It didn't really wow. move yeah. very much. It actually had gone down in value. So sometimes mm -hmm. we can't just go by the companies that we like. We need to actually go by companies that are good stocks to trade. So yeah. some of the things that, like, we look like, <laughs> someone said, tell them, Terry. Terry. <laughs> <laughs> That's some the of the, You're preaching right now. That's right. Yes. That's so some of the things that we look for when we're looking for stocks is we're looking for healthy companies, companies that move like a dollar a day because we want to actually make income from it. So we're not really looking at value companies that don't move. We're looking at strong companies, upward trend we're not looking at penny stocks. Our our companies are companies that are 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 good companies, and oftentimes penny stocks are way too risky. So, right. first right. thing I would say is like it's really important to know the right companies to pick, and be mm -hmm. careful of just going by what you like or what you've heard about. Actually, learn how to read a chart or even just look for something that's on a on an upward trend. And there's some companies right now on that note that I would say. Um, a lot of some companies have seasons. For example, mm -hmm. the airline stocks, I honestly would not look at the airline stocks right now because they're on a downward trend. And right. a lot of the, the airlines, although, you know, COVID seems to be improving slightly, it's going to take a while for those businesses to come back. So maybe look for some of the ones that actually are still doing well, like the uh, Salesforce just did, it just did amazing this week. So it's kind of at all time highs. And we'll talk about that in okay. a second. But um, look at the companies like self software companies, technology companies. Um, there's a couple. Um, there's a couple of home builders that are doing really well right now. Look at the companies that are actually doing well and go for them over the ones that are not doing so well. Okay, so. So, so yeah. Um, I want to add the fact that, oh, excuse me, if you have a question, can you guys just hit the question box, the icon, and put it in there? I do see you, Kyle. I wrote down your question. We'll get to that in a second. Terry kind of touched base on, you know, doing the research. Um, but I do okay. want to bring up the fact, especially in my family and people that I know, we're in such a buy and hold mentality, like for those of us who are investing. And mm -hmm. I raised my hand. I'm guilty of it. I mean, I've had stocks that went under and I had no idea. They like, <laughs> like the, the company went bust that there was no more because I just held it. It was like, I was I taught, watch, yeah. yeah, watching stocks is like watching grass grow. You'll get frustrated and all of that. But I've had to shift my mindset to know that, you know, yes, you should have a safety net. Absolutely. But then mm -hmm. there's an opportunity in the stock market and, what our counterparts have realized that the way you really build wealth is not the buy and hold, right? It's right. it's the action to be being a more um, um, active participant with your finances. And so, um, Terry, I don't know if you want to take this question now, but it says, "How do you find valuable companies?" And I know you talked uh, about stop, you know yeah. doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Kyle, one 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 tip I would give you is start looking at the CNBC app. Um, there's a couple couple tips there. When you're looking at CNBC, if you actually look at the live channel, oftentimes they'll start talking about companies that are pretty good companies for you to then look up and do your own research on. So you don't necessarily have to go with the opinion of the person on CNBC, but you'll start hearing some names that keep coming up, and then that'll give you a chance to, oh, maybe I should check out Zoom, or maybe I should check out Salesforce, oh, maybe I should check out Teladoc or Adobe, you know, like some of these things, you'll start hearing them come up on the CNBC network, and then you can go look at the charts for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that is kind of um, like, this is a, this is just my tip. It is just a random tip. Start looking at companies that are hiring. I don't know, I was on some like random conference, <laughs> and one of the ladies on there was talking about hiring and companies, like how to get a job. And it just clicked to me, the same companies that she was saying were hiring are the ones that I was looking at for stock picks. So that's mm -hmm. another little tip, too. If you yep. can think of a company that's still hiring in this season, they're probably doing pretty well, and you can right. start looking at their company. So that's and, just another little look. And tip. do you, is, is, would that be on CNBC, too? Like, how would they locate companies that are hiring? Is it just random picking of companies? Like, how could you find, would you go to, like, a job site? Yeah, to be to be completely honest, I haven't 
I haven't done like a whole bunch of research behind it, but it's cer certain things like I'll see an advertisement come through online and it's like, oh, okay. tech companies are still hiring and oh, right. this company is looking to bring in 12,000 more people or this company is looking. So, so it's just kind of a, like an yeah. anecdote. It's not a hard rule. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to get into, because I'm checking the time and I know people are waiting for the three, the three steps that you would recommend now um, that we do financially to set us up for, you know, success in the future. So if there's yep. tips that you can so give the us. First, you're, and you're welcome, Kyle. Kyle, Kyle Field said, very helpful. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so first step is I need all of you guys to open up a brokerage account. The first step is you can't trade stocks unless you have an online brokerage account open. And it's just like a bank account, but it's an account specially to trade stocks. And there's several different ones out there. Uh, one that I use with my students is one called TradeStation. It is a little harder to learn. So I'll tell you the truth. If you go open a TradeStation account, it's a little, it's got a lot more bells and whistles. It's more like the, like the Cadillac <laughs> of, oh, well, wow. of brokerage accounts. <laughs> but it's really made for traders. Like we get really fast entry times, which means we get better prices. So like if I place a trade and somebody on Robinhood or Fidelity place a trade, I'll probably get a better price. And TradeStation prides themselves on getting better prices for their traders. So like there's things like that, just the entry times and then our order types, we can do more sophisticated things like we can actually program our our trades and set it and forget it versus other brokers. So first thing, oh good, I am Josh Josh Elm said um, or Josh said I am I love trade station, so that's awesome. Yeah. But um, first thing you got to do is open a brokerage account. Of course, like I said, I like Trade Station, but there's many of them. Like there's Robinhood, E Trade, Fidelity. Just open an account somewhere, and you got to fund it. Each different broker is going to ask you to fund it with different amounts. Uh, one thing I like about TradeStation, though, is if you fund it with $500, they let you trade in a simulated account with fake money. So that would be step number two that I would suggest. As you're practicing trading, trade with a fake with fake money first. Um, if you're like me, I definitely just jumped in, traded with my own money, and then quickly lost my own money, too. Like... <laughs> But you don't have to do that. Like you can practice with fake money as you're learning, see some consistent gains and then go back to your real account. So I'd, I'd suggest and encourage you to do that. Practice makes perfect. So practice um, one little, another little anecdote or suggestion is try to get 10 successful trades in a row before you move over to your real account. And that's like a good little like, okay, when am I ready? when you can get 10 successful trades in a row. And that may take some time. And a successful trade, this is tip number three, know that sometimes you go, you're going to lose. But the key is to be ready to lose and to manage your losses in trading. It's like if you're in a boat and trying to sail somewhere, you can't be leaking a whole <laughs> bunch of water out the boat and expect right. to get to your goal. Like right. you got to stop the leaks. So when we're trading, we have a very managed risk tolerance, and we do that using something called a stop loss. Like if people want to look more, I have a free webinar at um, itradeandtravel.com. So itradeandtravel.com is a free webinar. But one of the tips to manage your losses is something called a stop loss order. Um, okay. But either way it goes, even if you don't know how to do a stop loss, just make sure you have in your mind a risk tolerance. If this thing goes down $200, I'm getting out of the trade. Just mm -hmm. something on the front end so that you're not, in the whole boat analogy, you're not midway in the ocean and sinking. And that does happen. I often see new investors, they just, they see their account going red and then they panic and then they just run away and they don't get out of it. And it's, it just keeps falling. Yeah. Thank you. Itradeandtravel.com. That's the free webinar. But yeah. yes, if um if you do see that your account is losing, I want you to have some plans to stop the losses. And and I appreciate you saying that because um not many court so I've been involved in a couple of um investment clubs and things like that and um you are the first person to really talk about 
how you can make money managing your your losses you know making sure that you're, you have protections against those and also how you can make money when the economy goes down yes you know, usually we just hear about you know making money when the stock prices go up but there are so many people out here getting making loaded. money big money when exactly. the market goes down and and that is another tip to throw out right right now we're at all-time highs in the s p and the nasdaq and then the dow is just a little bit from all-time highs we do have some room to keep running up but we also have quite a bit of room to go negative and tomorrow we have the fed speaking they're going to talk about whether they're going to continue stimulus so i want you guys to be prepared if we do take a dip there is ways to make money on the way down you just got to learn how to do it before <laughs> for exactly. the drop. <laughs> and you know what i'm just going to jump straight to you talking about the course that you offer and and what comes along with that because i know people really want to understand how they can protect themselves in this risky volatile you know climate so if you could talk about your course and what you offer and what the students will get and i know you have a price increase coming up so thank you for jumping yes. on for that <laughs> And you have a new co cohort starting next week. So if you could just share more about your course, that would be great. Sure. So um, in, the course is called Trade and Travel. And um, as we said, it's about trading, but then it's just doing, like living your dreams based on trading. And the course is an eight-week online program. So you can do it from anywhere in the world. I get a lot of students lately like, can I do it from Europe? Can I do it from Canada? Yes. It's an online curriculum. And it teaches seven different classes. So the first one is Intro to Stock Market, where we talk to the novices. How do you make money? Then Risk Management, how do you protect yourself from losing? Then we go into Technical Analysis, so that's how to read charts. And then the fourth, fourth part is a trading plan. What are my seven steps that I take every time I take a trade to have consistent wins? Okay. From there, we keep going on. And we go into shorting. Shorting is making money on the way down. So when the market falls, then we go into gaps and globex. So what happens when you have news overnight? What do you do? Then we go into options trading. So how do you take all the things I've taught so far and use it for options to amplify your gains? So mm -hmm. those are the seven classes. Altogether, that is um, $5,000. But what we know is some people are like, I don't have $5,000. So half of that is going up to twenty five hundred, but for right now you can actually get it for five hundred dollars off of that. So for nineteen ninety seven. So wow. if you go to investwithterry.com, that's what the class is about. So it's investwithterry.com. They should go to yes. for okay. So not itradeandtravel.com. Oh well, they can start there. That's the free webinar. So start at the free webinar itradeandtravel.com. And then okay. the class is at investwithterry.com when you're ready okay. to enroll. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I'm seeing these comments. My students are <laughs> here. Great. Thank y'all. <laughs> and, and you know what? I'm going to read a couple of them just for the people that are curious. Um, I love a good testimonial. I really do. <laughs> um, so I see Ashley has one and I am Josh has one. So first I see the golden beauty dot brains wants to know when they'll be discussing stimulus again. Did you say that's tomorrow? The feds will be talking about it tomorrow. I believe so. I, I need to check again, but I think the fed is th talking tomorrow. And whenever the fed talks, the market tends to move. It's like a big earnings report for the whole market. So be, be cautious of that. Okay. So just stay close to the news and, and list, you know, pay attention to what's going on. I see the simplistic vegetarian says trade station is great. Love being your student. Hashtag May cohort. Um, Yay. Ashley MC says trade and travel is the best. August 2020 cohort. And let me tell you, exclamation, exclamation. <laughs> it's the best investment. It. I've learned so much. Terry cares about her students. She's very knowledgeable and passes it on to us. And then Thank I am. Thank you, Ashley. Josh Ham says Terry is the best teacher ever. Information is so clear and understandable, unlike many courses. And the funny Aww. thing is, so I don't even really have to read my friends because um, <laughs> she's saying exactly what your stu your other students are saying. That you. What's your friend's name? Or if you, I don't know if you want to share it, but I'll, I'll send it to you. I'll send it. Okay. You. Yeah. Yes. Let me know. <laughs> I don't know who's <laughs> on here, so. Um, but yeah, she absolutely raved. She said, you know something? She said, it's so obvious that she came from a teaching background. 
<laughs> and that you have such patience with each because she was a she's not invested at all so she's mm. very beginner and she just raved about the patience that um you exhibited during the course and how much she's learned um and so thank you for um you know i guess you know for her to she's very skeptical so for her to rave the way she has about you um and she talks about fear paralyzing her with investments but mm -hmm. you have just made taken away some of that fear you know so she i just totally um wanted to meet you share you with you know um some of my audience so that we can you know win at this game because one of the key phrases that i learned when working in corporate america is that you should never let a crisis go to waste. Like this is mm. a time that we have, a lot of us have extra time on our hands. We are bored in the house and we're in the house bored. <laughs> still, you know, depending on which state you're in, some of us are, you know, still on lockdown. And so with that time, why not educate yourself to set yourself, you know, set up for the future. And so I think you absolutely, um, offer a, a, a solve for how we can be better at the end of this. And I'm trying to read, this is Ine, I missed your course sign up by two days, signed up else, elsewhere, we'll have to circle back. Okay. Well, come on back when you're ready, we'll be here. <laughs> and, and, and I also like to think, so what I did before I signed up for your course, one, I prayed, <laughs> two, Good. I put together a plan, like a, a timing, like I'm taking, I'm treating this as if I'm in college again, or if I'm in grad school. So I'm setting up days that I'm going to dedicate, you know, certain amount of hours. And then, you know, yeah. for not only um, listening to the information, but also practicing. And yes. then um, I'm committed by November of this year the end, before Thanksgiving, I am going to double the investment. That is my commitment to myself. And so, you know, each day I'm going to be nice. getting closer to that goal. And so um, how, how do I do it working full time? Is um, Shamia wants to know how does she do it working full time? Shamia, what I did when I was working full time is I would trade at night. So I would prepare my charts at night time. So if you can make like a hour a night, if possible, I know sometimes you won't be able to, that's okay. But I would spend about an hour each night just looking at the charts and setting them up for the next day. And then when I was at work, you trade on your cell phone. So I would just make some oh. time during the morning, uh, lunchtime and afternoon to just check my phone. And that's how I would trade. Oh. And what I yeah, and I actually just talked to a student today, and I, I told her she was over trading because she felt like, oh, I got to do it every day. Terry says, you know, I have a goal, a daily goal. But honestly, <laughs> it's an average. So a lot of times you may be able to do a swing trade and make the same amount of money as you would if you were trading every day. So like, say your goal is $100 a day. Well, you might do a trade that lasts a few days and it makes $300. Well, you just made your average, right? You didn't have to trade every day. So mm -hmm. it's something that it can be done. You don't have to worry about trying to, you know, rush it every day. Yeah, and I think that's a fear a lot of people have too, that you have to stay in front of a computer all day long in order to mm -hmm. be successful at trading. And the most successful people I know, <laughs> the people that were living in Valley for a year, trading every, you know, morning, they would spend max two hours you know right. trading a day right. that's like max sometimes they get in and get out within you know a half an hour to an hour. yeah yeah so you, you can definitely was... do it while working full oh. time yeah i i hundred percent like i said the most successful people i know as day traders did not spend hours a day <laughs> trading so no <laughs> so, my yeah. my goal lately has been ten thousand dollars a day and so today, within the first hour, I actually had my, my cousin came like an hour into the trading day. So I was like, dang, I got to get off of here. So within like the first hour, I made 11000 and then it was over. The rest of the day, I kind of looked, and then I said, well, I'm done. I met my goal. Let's move on. So, so yeah, it's not, not something that you have to spend a whole, whole bunch of time, but that comes with experience, right? I've also been trading for a while. So it takes more time when you're starting and then it gets less and less. Okay. And but Shamia, we're going to get to your next question. Somebody had posted a question. Um, Trader.help101. What's the lowest price <laughs> stock you would buy? Hey, Alexander. So I oh. definitely don't want to do penny stocks. 
Um, so anything under $10, I'm probably not buying. But the, the lowest one right now that I've been following is probably Toll Brothers. It's around 40 in the like $45 range. So that's okay, one that... All, I love their homes. <laughs> right? Aren't they beautiful? That's like my dream house. Yes. Oh my gosh. So Toll Brothers is how much right now, did you say? They're, I think they're around $45. Um, they moved a little bit today, so I don't know what they closed at, but around $45 is how much theirs is. Okay. Mm -hmm. and be, go ahead. I want to be sensitive every time. We have two more questions. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. So um, Shamia wants to, she wants to know, I have an account with Ameritrade, so can, so can I just transfer it? I guess yes. to TradeStation? Um, yes. Shamia? Mm -hmm. okay. And we have a really great partner at TradeStation. Like his name is Corey Andrews. You call him and he can help you do any transfers you want, whether that's transferring your retirement account to a new retirement at TradeStation or, you know, if you have some shares that you don't want to sell, but you want to move those over, you can do that. So, yes, you can just transfer it. And I guess, can you just briefly talk about what, so I was watching you someplace else. Like I said, I've been stalking you for a while. And you talked about um, some 401ks are allowing um, individuals. Yeah, so can you talk about that quickly, you know, to let people sure. know? Sure. With the, mm -hmm. So with the 401k, usually if you take money out early, you would get penalized twice. You would get a 10% penalty for being under, I think it's under 55. And then you would get um, penalized by paying income tax on the, on the money. Well, now, because of the stimulus, they've taken out that 10% penalty for three years. So you could take money out without having to worry about that, which is really a blessing. Okay. And then, yeah, one of the things I would say is maybe still invest it, but you can self-invest it, yes. manage it yourself, and then you can always put that money back. And I think, you know, this is me speaking. <laughs> I think it, would, it could be beneficial to look into that if you think you don't have the money now to you know, invest in trade, you really may. Like there, there are places that you're probably not looking and that is one of the places. And mm -hmm. um, I definitely, you know, recommend, of course, going to I am trade, uh, excuse me, I trade and travel.com. And I, what, what's the other website? <laughs> oh, Instagram. Oh, investwithterry.com. Investwithterry.com. See, yeah. I'm already registered. So I, I don't even remember <laughs> The way. I love it. I okay, love it. So um, there's another. I am looking to sign up for the September course. I wanted to know what the difference is between the 2K and 5K course. Also, will mm -hmm. we possibly get what it to invest in for the day on either of them? Okay, so let me answer the second question first. I am not a copy trader. A copy trader is one of those traders that kind of tells you this is what you invest in and then they go invest in it. I'm not a copy trader because I'm a teacher. I want to teach you how to look for stocks yourself and then be able to get in and out without me. Because there's going to be days, y'all, I did this so I could have a freer life. There's days where I don't trade. So I don't want you waiting for me when I'm chilling on the, the back patio, <laughs> relaxing. Um, I want you to know how to do it for yourself. So I'm not a copy trader. Um, however, one of the big differences between the 2K program and the 5K program is I do do two mastermind classes with the VIPs. I do a Monday mastermind class doing, during trading hours. And then I do a Thursday. Yeah. And then I do a Thursday class. It's more of a Q&A with the VIPs on Thursday. And I can tell you that some of them, or probably many of them, will tell you that they've gotten some great advice during those calls that made them money. And the Tuesday, for the other class, the 2K class, they have a Tuesday call, but it's not quite the same. They don't get the same kind of live um, time with me that the VIPs do. Okay. And then Jason, J.D. Howard, excuse me, says, I think she is amazing. We had her on Money Making Conversations with Rashawn McDonald. Her story oh, and service needs to be viral. So, I mean, the census is Thank you so much. Today. Somebody else said you're the bomb. They, they type bam, but I think they're trying to say you're the bomb.com. <laughs> yes. so, listen, I, I really hope we can bring you back, you know, um, on a semi-regular basis. And, um, you know, I, I just really think you're doing such a service and, like, um, 
Harris said, you know, you need to be viral. Well, I know you are partially viral, but the more people we can get you exposed to, the better, you know, it will be for our community. And like I said, with this being National Black Business Month, please go out, support a Black-owned business. Um, you don't, you could be an ally. You can be, you know, just support a Black-owned business because we have been hit the hardest um, through this pandemic. I do want to um, give Terry the last word to say about before we do that, please join in tomorrow. We, our guest speaker will be um, Clarissa and Kenneth from Pure Noir Wines. They're a couple Ooh. from Texas who launched their own wine um, brand. And um, they're going to tell their story about how they were able to, you know, overcome some of the issues, the challenges that, you know, we face <laughs> as it relates to the wine and spirits industry and how travel tied into that. And so we look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow. I believe it's 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock. I'll post it, but I believe it's 8 o'clock um, CT, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, um, 8 o'clock Central. So, Terry, I'm going to turn it over to you. I don't know if you see any more questions, if you want to answer those, but I turn it over to you um, sure. to take us home. Say good night. Yeah. Well, thank you all of you all that joined today. Like these have been like the most beautiful comments. So thank you all so much. And then thank you so much for having me. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And I cannot wait, wait to see you in the chorus and like see how you're doing. So yes, I, we've got to come back so I can check up on you and see yes. like, how you're doing. I may have training. bags under my eyes, baby. <laughs> No, you can have bags in your hand. You can have money bags. You can be well, like, that, that, I have my first thousand dollars a day. Oh the God. only bags we check it for are the money bags. That's right. Yes. Um, but at Trade and Travel, we have a goal to help a thousand students make a thousand dollars in a day. And it's called our million dollar a day initiative because if we have a thousand students making a thousand dollars a day, that's a million dollars a day that can change the world. And guess what? We actually just hit, we're at 340. So we're almost at 350 people in our $1,000 in a day club. They have already generated over a million dollars in revenue in the market. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to see you guys come into the course so we can help you become a, a part of the $1,000 a day club. And I just, yeah. sorry, somebody wanted to know when does the special end? I guess the, the um, when does your price go up? <laughs> Yes, the price goes up right after Labor Day, the day after Labor Day. So September 8th, the price of the class is going to go up. And we do have a new cohort starting September 1st. The class is online, but we just restart our coaching calls each, um, each month. So that's why we do new cohorts every month. Okay. And um, Martha, that's M. Ramos, official. Kim, you rock. Terry, thanks for the inspo. Yes, we do need more conversations with... Um, our audience and everyone else i just thank you for coming out tonight i'm going to save this please share it with someone yes please save it. it from it like i said i have joined <laughs> i'm going to be part of the september cohort please if you also join say hi to me <laughs> in um, the facebook group because you'll have access to that and we'll, we're going to invite terry back because this was amazing and and i thank you so much for your commitment and your inspiration mm -hmm. and living the life most of us dream about, but dreams can come, you know, become reality with the work. So thank you so much, Terry. And we'll talk thank soon. You. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Bye. <laughs> Please save this. This was so great. I will. Okay. Thank